After talking about the transfers who could start, it's time to take a look at the freshmen who could start for Sun Devils football in 2024. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thanks, as always, for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. You can stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter. You'll find me at RichieBrads36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. And I also want to shout out my everydayers who are here every day. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business, and that's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions apply. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are talking players who could start in 2024 for the Sun Devils. We're not talking about the guys who started last year. No, we're talking about the new guys coming in. Yesterday, we talked about the transfers, and if you missed that, definitely go check it out. There's a handful of guys that I think can be not just, you know, plug-and-play starters, but like high-level starters for the team. So definitely check that out. Here with the freshmen, I think we're going to see a very similar situation as we did last year in the sense of, I don't know how many of these guys will be full-time starters. I do think that there are a handful of guys that are going to be in line for pretty nice roles, but as far as like a full-time starter or a plug and play, I don't know if there's a guy in here, not even to the fault of the class or knocking like the talent. That's, that's not it at all. It's the Sun Devils are being built right now through the transfer portal and through veterans. I anticipate that to be the same thing in 2024. There's 22 uh, transfers that are coming in as of now. Plenty of them are going to see significant playing time, if not full-time starting um, opportunities. Last year's freshman class, similar to what we're looking at now, also was kind of on the outside looking in, and a lot of them redshirted, and we'll have to take a closer look at those guys as well. But this feels like it could be a similar situation. Now, with that being said, of course, there's plenty of guys that I think could be seeing some decent playing time. You've got 17 incoming freshmen, potentially 18, depending on what happens with Colin Charles. That's still kind of up in the air, but you know, cross that road when we get to it. There's guys here that I do think we can start, and we're going to go ahead and do a quick little honorable mention here, and that is Punter Canyon Floyd. I am very much on record as I feel this is the plug-and-play guy. This, to me, feels like you're starting punter. I know that, like, Ian Hershey's there, and, like, there's some other competition as well, but Canyon Floyd, Valley Kid, five-star punter, I believe a two-star overall. Uh, No, he did get to be a three-star. So three-star overall prospect, a five-star punter, Valley Kid from Horizon High School out in Scottsdale. Dude's got a leg. He can push it. And that's what the Sun Devils were lacking last year, was a punter who could flip the field. Floyd is that guy, you know, pending some kind of just total decrease and step backwards as a player, which we we don't ever predict that stuff. But I believe that right now, Canyon Floyd is your starting punter. I just... Don't know how much I can really say about him other than that, but I do believe in him to be the the starter there and be able to flip the field. We'll go ahead and hop into, I've got six guys here that I think could potentially find some little niches and potential starting roles for the team. We'll start with the most obvious of the bunch, and that's Jason Brown, the running back who is coming in um, from O'Day High School out in Washington, four-star prospect and the highest rated prospect. For the Sun Devils, he is 
a little spark plug at 5'8", 194. He's a hard runner. He's someone that can do a little bit of everything for you. And even going into a really loaded running back room, there's a reason I think he could still see some good playing time and potentially start down the roll down the road for the team. Excuse me. I see a very talented running back. I see somebody who looks to be the future of the program beyond this year. So maybe he's in a reserve role this year, right? Down the road, he feels like he's going to be one of the main faces of this program and at the running back position. There's definitely a lot of hype behind him, and there's a lot of people that are feeling he could be that kind of guy. Also helps when you are highly recruited. But I also see that the Sun Devils have a veteran running back room. Shocker, we already mentioned that that's a lot of what we're looking at. But you have Cameron Scadaboo, who, until further notice, is your starting running back. DeCarlos Brooks, who looked great when he played, but he was injured last year quite a bit. He missed more than half the games. Tyson Brown looked plenty good. I definitely expect him to continue having a role for the team. And now they bring in Relique Brown, who Kenny Dillingham said is a running back for the team, not a wide receiver. They are going to get him the ball in more ways than one. I don't know if he's a 200 carry guy because of everybody else that they have, but who knows? But you look at all those different guys, right? You've got Scadaboo, who could possibly be a bell cow. You've got Relique Brown, who's going to be a running back, but he's also going to get the ball in a variety of different ways. And DeCarlos Brooks is very talented, but he's often injured. We haven't been able to truly rely on him yet. And Kyson Brown, I still think, is probably right now running back four if DeCarlos is healthy. But if he's not, then he's three behind Relique and behind Scadaboo. So how does Jason Brown figure into this? Well, you had a crowded running back room last year, and Kyson Brown still saw quite a bit of playing time. Scadaboo was a very important piece of what they did last year. And when DeCarlos Brooks was healthy, he he was the guy who spelled him. But when he wasn't healthy, which was more than half the year, Kyson Brown was out there. And Kyson Brown was a very capable running back. Jason Brown might find himself, excuse me, might find himself in a similar situation. He might find himself as one of the more talented guys on the team because he is going to walk onto campus. He's going to walk onto the football field and instantly be one of the most talented running backs on the roster. He might be the most talented running back on the roster. He's, he is that guy. So when you've got somebody that's as talented as he is, as long as he brings his effort and as long as he is willing to put in the time, the effort, both on and off the field, and be a good student. That's something that Kenny Dillingham also places value in. So he needs to be going to class, and he needs to be doing everything that he can. You're going to get playing time, and you're going to get onto the football field. And the thing is, Jason Brown is talented enough that once he gets on the football field, it's going to be really difficult to keep him off the football field. And again, we haven't even seen him take a snap yet. That's one of the biggest caveats here with talking about these freshmen that are coming in. We are still very much trying to figure out what's going on with these guys. So this is a very preliminary list. But with Jason Brown, he feels like a very difficult player to keep off of the field. That's kind of where I'm at with him. He's, he looks good. And if he is able to make the most of the opportunities he sees, who knows? By the end of the year, this could be a starting running back for the team. I also see the Sun Devils having a really weird situation with starting guys. He probably has the lowest chance of the other guys on this list. But I would tell you he has the highest chance of having significant playing time. Real quick, there's one other four-star that's on the team, and everybody knows I'm a very big fan, and that's Jaden Fortier. He is not on this list, and the reason why is he is recovering from an ACL surgery, so I have no idea when he's going to be ready. 
I don't know if he's going to be ready at the start of training camp or if he's potentially out for the year and red shirting. I have no idea. Everyone knows I'm a big 40A guy. I'm waiting to see what the diagnosis is going to be and how long he's going to be out. Because if he is going to be healthy for the season, then yeah, it's very easy for me to slot him onto this list. Did want to mention that real quick as we conclude talking about the four stars on this team. But beyond the two four stars, there's some really good three-star kids, some very high three-star kids, and some diamonds in the rough that are on this roster as well. And some of these guys I do also envision, as the list and the episode would entail, could potentially see some starting time. We're going to talk about them in just a moment. This is the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. At the start of the new year, every small business owner is asking themselves the same question. What's the one move I can make that'll take my business to the next level in 2024? LinkedIn Jobs knows that success always depends on the team that you surround yourself with. And that's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tool to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. And you know, as a small business owner, that having that right team member is what can help you get to that next level. It's everything to you. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats that it might not have the time or resources to hire. And thankfully with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks as always for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Want to bring some attention to the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. You're going to be caught up to date on all of the biggest stories in every league, every sport. Football, basketball, baseball, hockey. If you missed that Pete Carroll is stepping down as the Seahawks head coach, well, don't worry. Because Locked On Sports Today is going to get you caught up to that and make sure that you're not missing any big news. So definitely go to the YouTube channel and hit subscribe to the first ever 24-7 streaming channel. Right back into our conversation now when taking a look at the next freshman that I think could be seeing some playing time for the team. And we're going to focus on the interior of the offensive line here. Arizona State is bringing in four guys through their recruiting class. The two who stand out to me are... Terrell Kim and Samisi Tonga. The reason why I highlight them is because they are already at a proper playing weight. Terrell Kim is 6'3", 238 pounds, and Samisi Tonga is 6'4", 310 pounds. So they're already looking like the part. When you have guys that are built to immediately get slotted into playing time, that's going to help you out to see the field. And that's why I think those guys have a better chance than the two behind them. The other two are Suka, Salu- uh, Suka Saluni, excuse me, and Champ Westbrooks. And the reason why I don't have them in the same tier as Terrell Kim and Samisi Tonga is because both of them need to bulk up. Champ Westbrooks right now is just under 6'4". He's listed at 6'3 and a half. 248 pounds, there is a significant amount of weight he needs to put on. I mean, we're talking about at least 50 pounds, at least to be able to get up to 300, which is where you want majority of you guys to be. And then uh, Suka Saluni is currently 6'5", 272. He's closer, but again, you really want your playing weight of your offensive lineman to be 300. Especially on the interior, you don't want smaller guys. You need them to be able to bulk up. And I think that this is going to place them in a situation where they could be redshirting. And that's honestly a very good thing. 
keeps their eligibility. They're able to bulk up and focus on getting to proper playing weight and all that good stuff. I think it's a very good thing for the Sun Devils. This is not a, oh my gosh, you're not going to be able to play, blah, blah, blah. Not at all. Especially when you consider the fact that there are plenty of guys that are coming in through the transfer portal as well. Guys we talked about yesterday as potential starters for the team. They're bringing in Shanko Matatia. They're bringing in Joey Suoff. There's there's guys that are coming in that are going to be competing for playing time. It just flat out. It's going to be difficult for these freshmen to get onto the field, especially on the offensive line, because there is going to be such a big emphasis on getting proven guys out there. We saw in 2023 how important and how imperative it was to have the depth along the offensive line and especially have the proven guys because ASU was just decimated by injuries last year. And the offensive line was one of the units that was very much impacted. So they're going to want to have their veteran guys while they develop the younger guys behind them and have them slotted in for future roles. But with that being said, again, you faced a situation where guys were getting playing time because you had injuries. You might be looking at the same thing this year and, you know, knock on wood, you're not trying to jinx it and get guys injured or anything like that. But maybe the guys that you brought in don't play well, right? Maybe the guys that are coming in just aren't a fit for what the Sun Devils are looking for. And then you look at how Kenny Dillingham has specifically recruited this, these guys. And suddenly they're seeing more significant playing time during practice. They're getting first team reps. They're getting second team reps. That could be a legitimate scenario here. And I think Terrell Kim and Samissi Tonga are at the top of that list for me is they're already at the playing weight. They're quality guys that are coming in. I mean, Terrell Kim is a very high uh, three-star kid graded at an 88, according to uh 24 seven, which is where I always go. But he's actually the the third highest kid in our class. He's the number four prospect out of Oregon. He's the number 40 prospect along interior linemen in the nation. If anyone were to start based off of potential, feels like it would be Terrell Kim. But the bottom line here is you've got four interior linemen. You've got two of them that are at playing weight, and you've got two of them that are going to be looking to bulk up. If I were to guess right now, I would tell you that Westbrooks and Saluni uh, are probably looking at redshirt years while they built uh, bulk up. Excuse me, Terrell Kim and Simisi Tonga would not be surprised if they found themselves on the football field this year. But again, there's a lot of different factors that's going to play into that. You know, how are snaps getting di uh, distributed? How are how are the guys ahead of them playing? How are these freshmen playing? If they are up to the task and if the guys ahead of them don't play well enough, then there is a very, very realistic chance and opportunity for these guys to get onto the football field. There's four guys here, man. There are four offensive linemen who are going to be competing for significant playing time this year along the interior. Those are two guys that I specifically am looking at, plus the other two that I think could be looking at red shirts, but who knows? We'll see how it ends up playing out. But there's three more guys that I want to highlight here before we wrap up the show. This is the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is easy to use, and there's a variety of different ways to bet, including same game parlays, and you can find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, too. It's the best way to find popular parlays and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. 
one more time. Thanks as always for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. A shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. And I also want to shout out one more time the Locked On Sports Today 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. So if you missed any big stories like Pete Carroll stepping down as the Seahawks head coach, then go over and check it out. You're going to be caught up to date on all your sports, all four major leagues, college, everything that you can think of is going to be covered. Hit subscribe, the first 24-7 streaming channel of its kind. Wrapping up the conversation, there's three more guys that I want to talk about. And the first one, this is this is a guy that I view in a Relique Brown role, not as a player, because Relique Brown is a borderline superstar. But Zachariah Sample is someone that I could see in a similar role to Relique Brown, especially as a special teamer. He had some special special team success during his high school career when he was at uh, Caddy Jordan uh, High School in Fullshear, Texas. He's 5'9", 160, a little spark plug, super fast, super agile. He is probably going to be coming in as a receiver as far as like actual labels go, but he feels like someone that you're just going to want to get the ball to. And if he is able to play up to the talent level, then once again, you're going to have a really difficult time keeping him off the field. That's what I see with sample. He is as talented a player in this recruiting class as you have. When you have just the God given abilities that he has and you you take into account this is a team that's going to want to be getting a boost on offense this year after a less than stellar season a year ago and they're just going to be looking for guys to turn in the weapons for the team then yeah Zachariah Sample could find himself in the offense but I really think that his his best opportunity to start would be with special teams. They're going to be looking for guys this year. And there are some talented returners. Relique Brown tops the list. Elijah Badger had a very, very good season a year ago. Jordan Tyson, now that he's 100% healthy, has some prowess as a punt returner. There's no shortage of competition here. But this, to me, is where Zachariah Sample has his best opportunity to be a starter for the team is special teams is a returner. Heck even as a gunner, like I know he's not the biggest guy in the world, but just the fact that you can get him down the field as quick as he can, if he can find a way to make those wrap up tackles. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want a, a speeding bullet down the field? A lot of these guys should be looking at special teams as far as returning goes. I think that Sample could find himself in a very, very good situation. There is another athlete, however, and that's James Giggy. Giggy is, of course, the kid from Bradshaw Mountain High out in Prescott Valley. He's, I, I call him a local kid just because he's from Arizona. Obviously, he's up north. He's an hour, hour and a half away, depending on where you live. 6'3", 245. Both a uh, two-way athlete, play tight end, defensive lineman, linebacker, Mr. Do-It-All. And that's why he feels like a potential starter for me. He, I look at him as almost like an H-back kind of guy. And I would just be so interested to see because Arizona State is not a team that's going to utilize a fullback more often than not. And when they do, I mean, last year, you saw DeCarlos Brooks line up at fullback with Cameron Scadaboo behind him. They are not going to be running traditional sets like that. But if you did, a 6'3", 245-pound uh, fullback sounds like a good thing to have. The Sun Devils are also going through a bit of a transition at tight end. They lost Messiah Swenson. They lost Jalen Conyers. They are waiting for Jaden Fortier to be healthy. Bryce Pierre is back. James Giggy played tight end at Bradshaw Mountain High. Maybe he's able to find a way as like a third tight end or in the heavy set kind of thing. 
Who knows? And then, of course, on defense, when you have a guy who can stand up or put a hand in the dirt, there is absolutely opportunity for you to get onto the football field. James Giggy feels like of the of the guys listed here, the only ones I would put ahead of him would be Terrell Kim and Samisi and Samisi Tonga, Canyon Floyd. But again, I left him off this list just because I feel like he's a lock almost. Maybe Jason Brown. I think that there's a really good chance here for James Giggy to get significant playing time. We'll be very interested to see how that ends up shaking out for him. One last guy I want to talk about. There's a lot of defensive backs that are coming in. Um, some guys rated higher than others. You got Martel Hughes. You got Rodney Bamaj. You got Tony Luz and Cuba. But the one who interests me the most. Chris Johnson Jr. Chris Johnson Jr. He looks the part, man. 6'1", 180. He's from Alito, Texas, from Alito High School. He just won the state championship. He is, I think he's another guy where it's like if he played anywhere else in the country because he's a three-star. If he played anyone anywhere else in the country, he's a four-star kid. I view him in very high esteem. And you're going through a lot of transition at cornerback right now. You're losing your top three guys from last year. Jordan Clark at the transfer portal. D Ford and uh, Ro Torrance ran out of eligibility. There's some transfers from the unit. There are opportunities here for guys to start. Ed Woods is definitely one of the starting corners right now. To me, there's like no ifs, ands, or buts about that. 100% going to be a starter. You've got guys that are coming in as well that I expect to be competing for starting roles. Cole Martin feels like the starting uh, slot corner for the team. There's a ton, a ton, a ton of safeties that are coming in. Uh, LaTerrence Wells, Javen Robinson. There's going to be really good competition at corner. But I look at Chris Johnson Jr., Man, I don't know how you keep him off the field. Even in the, in a rotational role, I don't know how you keep him off the field in 2024. I'm really curious to see how he performs during training camp. Because if he's able to find a way to stand out, he's going to be looking at good playing time. And if he plays well in that playing time, by the end of the year, he might be a starter. There's, there are guys here that make sense to plug and play. Ed Woods, Mason Williams feel like they got inside tracks to start. Uh, Cole Martin definitely feels like the starting slot corner. Who knows what goes on with safety, but you may see those guys transition as well. I know Montana Warren during training camp last year was playing in the slot. And I'd be curious if that continues to be the case for him. You've got plenty of guys that are going to be driving up competition. And there's plenty of freshmen too. Again, Bimaj, Luz Nakuba, Martel Hughes. Like there are guys coming in that are going to be competing for playing time. I don't know what it is though. I, I look at Chris Johnson Jr. And he excites me. And I'm so curious how he performs during training camp, during the off season. If he looks the way I believe he can play. He's going to see some good playing time. He is the last guy I have here as my freshman with the best chance to start. I'm curious who stands out to you guys. Was I a fool to leave Jaden Fortier off this list? Do you think he's going to end up starting this year? Do you think that Jason Brown's going to have a nice role? What do you think of the interior linemen? Any other freshmen that I might be missing? Let me know in the comments. You can hit me up on Twitter. You can find me at Richie Brad 36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. But of course, wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. I appreciate you guys as always for tuning in. We're going to be continuing some good off-season coverage as the season goes on. There's basketball to take a look at, all sorts of good stuff. So now has been, there. there's never been a better time to subscribe. We're almost at 700 subscribers too. So if you want it to be that person to get me to 700, 
I would very much greatly appreciate you. I will see you guys again tomorrow, though. So until then, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sunday.